Welcome back to the 715 Podcast. We finally figured out a name for it. New location, new everything. We're upgrading this baby. Today we got Vincent Trapani on. Vince, thanks for coming on, bro. How you doing today? Pretty good. Just got done playing catch with Grant. Um, glad to be here. I love watching your guys' stuff. It's a hot day today, man. It's probably 95 and 80% humidity out there today. But Vince, why don't you give yourself more of an introduction here to those who don't quite know you as well as uh, Jackson or I do. Yeah, um... I'm Vince Trapani. I go to school with these guys. Um, mostly, I just spend my time playing baseball and hanging out with friends like these guys. So I'm glad to be here. It should be some fun. Yeah, so one thing that I really want to get into right away is obviously your baseball thing. Um, and we were just out there playing catch today. So why don't you just run us through like a normal schedule of like what your week would look like during the heightened baseball season. And then we can get into kind of what COVID has changed. But let's just yeah. hear kind of what that schedule is like. Yeah, so I mean, I'll just start it off like this week. Today I'm leaving at 6 in the afternoon to go to one event. And then after that, I have to schedule a pickup from a different group that's going to bring me to Indianapolis the following day. And then I'll be staying in a hotel for three or four days just with a teammate or two. And then after that, um, probably Sunday-ish, be coming back home and then basically cycles through. I Resets. come back home, play catch with you or a buddy I can find, and just cycles back every single week. Yeah, so with that busy schedule, what do you do in your free time when you're not doing any baseball type stuff? You know, it's it's hard to find time to do other stuff, uh, to be honest with you, but I do like playing video games. Um, I'll go out and work out, which is, I would guess, kind of a part yeah. of the baseball stuff. But other than that, I spend a lot of time with my family and – that's basically it. I'm not doing too much other than baseball during the season. Yeah, so the team that you play with is uh, GRB out of Madison, Greg Reinhardt Baseball. Um, yeah, you know a lot about that. Yeah, I, I, we, Vince and I played on a team together for uh, two to three years down there and uh, went down there, drove down to Madison for Sunday morning practices uh, every weekend. And um, Why don't you talk a little bit about kind of your story and how you ended up at GRB mm -hmm. or how you started playing this high level of travel baseball? Yeah, for sure. Um so I guess I'll start from, I've started playing Little League here in Eau Claire. It's where I met a lot of my friends locally. Um, I gradually kind of realized that maybe I could play um, travel baseball after that. So me and Grant actually, our first year after Little League, went and played with the uh, T-Cats out of Madison. We drive up there uh, once or twice a week, like three hours or so, right, for practices. Yep. And um, so from there I got kind of used to the travel and um, just kind of the hustle and bustle of a, crazy season um and then we had a little switch we um so we were playing for thundercats my parent or my dad and grant's dad they brought us out to a restaurant and told us that yeah. um they kind of had an idea for us to maybe go play somewhere else after that and it was actually grb where i play now um, we eventually ended up playing together when we were 14 years old and then kind of split up a little bit after that but yep. um yeah we just kind of switched spots and it it's kind of weird for us, but we got to know each other better and yeah. still got to play together, so it was really fun. Yeah, I'd say that was a big turning point in our friendship and overall just kind of getting to know you was that T-Cats because we had played basketball together and for sure. we were decent friends, but then that really kind of extended our friendship. So you've been able to make that move to the next level now, Vince, mm -hmm. from GRB. Um, why don't you talk about that a little bit and kind of that experience leading up to making that decision of going to play where you're playing now? Yeah, so when I was 15 or so, I started getting some interest from some college programs, and it was really cool for me. I mean, just talking to schools that mm -hmm. you uh, grow up, like watching on TV. Um, so I started talking to schools when I was 15 or so, my freshman year. Um, I pitched in one game down in Georgia, and that's when it really started to get um, pretty heavy in terms of recruiting. And um, from there, I kind of narrowed down a few programs that I wanted to kind of go look at it. I took some visits and went and saw different places, which was crazy, awesome experience. And I eventually ended up picking the University of Arkansas, which is um, amazing facilities, coaches, everything. Um, really excited. I'm going down there in a year. It's crazy. I <laughs> made the decision maybe a year ago, a little year and a half ago. Yeah. And now it's almost here. So I was really blessed to have the opportunities that, opportunities that I did. And I'm excited to go down. 
Uh, so obviously with COVID and everything going around about that, I, I hate asking about it, but it's something that's probably got to be brought up is, and how has that impacted kind of the baseball this summer? Um, and, and then your preparation leading up to your days at Arkansas. Yeah, luckily for me, I didn't really have any events canceled or anything. So I've been out and about. I've been on the last three weeks. I've been to Kansas City, Indianapolis, and just down in Kenosha. Um, so it really hasn't impacted anything for me in terms of scheduling or tournaments. But I think getting the time to kind of start, or not start, but just getting that time off in the spring to really work out more and focus. Obviously, I'm still focusing on school, but mm -hmm. kind of having more time at home to manage that gave me time to kind of figure out different stuff I could do in terms of working out. And I think it really helped me out for sure. I had more time to dedicate to baseball and just getting better all around. Yeah, that's sweet, dude. I, so you talked a little bit about your like weightlifting and stuff like that earlier, but can you go and dive into that a little bit deeper on like what your mindset is when you go into the weight room or like, I know you mm -hmm. love to like just move around some yeah, heavy sure. stuff, <laughs> heavy stuff. Like you can, you can move some weight in there. So why don't you just touch on that a little bit? Cause that's, that's a pretty good thing to talk about. Yeah. Um, I used to kind of focus more on just moving like huge weight. I would go and be like, Oh, let's just try to lift as much as I can. And now I've kind of moved into a, like a place where I'm more focused on being strong while at the same time being mobile and being flexible and kind of being able to be more efficient with my, mm -hmm. I guess, um, mechanics and stuff like that. Instead of just like, let's go in and try to deadlift 800 pounds today, yeah. <laughs> which I think kind of, it didn't hurt me last year, no. but, um, I've definitely seen improvements on I focus more on movement as well, instead of just stacking on plates and trying to yeah. see what I could do with that. Yeah. And, and it was, it was weird for me too, to kind of watch you try to work through COVID because, um, you're always coming in the weight room and, and you can squat and deadlift super heavy weights. And then you didn't always have that weight, um, during mm -hmm. kind of quarantine. So it, it was interesting to try to see you try to figure out how you can still keep working to reach that ultimate goal. And what would you say your ultimate goal is right now with baseball? Um, Obviously, I mean, it's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid. I, it's most kids dream to be like a professional athlete, right? Um, and sure. I think as I've progressed, it's kind of become more and more real and more possible to me. Um, and I've seen, I've had friends get drafted recently, guys I know. And just seeing them, being able to talk to them and like, I know that guy. Like, that yeah. could be me someday. Um, I think that's what's been really cool. And it's become a real um thing in my mind like I believe it can For happen sure. so mm -hmm. that's my ultimate goal is to play in the major leagues and doing everything I can to get there yeah man that's just I got goosebumps from that because <laughs> it's like you grow up with the guy and you watch him like I played T-Cats and then I played one year at GRB and then he we just played against each other too and like little league and yeah yeah we did and basketball played too. basketball with each other and then you just see this guy like grow up and just take leaps and bounds and, and he's Vince is a pitcher I don't know if you want to we can talk about that later but Vince is a pitcher that just totally excelled in what he did and put his mindset to it and really dove into the mental game of how he could be a better pitcher and um uh, you're seeing someone that's really going to excel at the next level and I think you'll get drafted for sure dude so that's just Appreciate super that. exciting man but um why don't you talk a little bit about uh your position and what it takes to kind of be that elite level pitcher for sure um I mean, thanks for calling me elite. I'm not sure if I'm there yet. <laughs> I mean, you're yeah. you're elite, dude. I mean, you're ranked, and anybody that can throw 90 miles an hour is elite. So, yeah. So, I mean, right? I, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean, um, you're elite. I, you're elite, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I guess um, the pitching, being a pitcher, a lot of people don't think it's really an athletic position. They always will reference like. Um, guys in the major leagues that aren't necessarily like yeah. good looking athletes Bartol, or, Cologne. <laughs> yeah your ideal like jacked guy mm. but um in my opinion it takes a lot of just um coordination really actually um and there's a lot of moving parts that you got to get synced up so it's definitely hard i think a lot of people don't really um understand it until they've really done it mm -hmm. and um it's just tough for people to gauge kind of how tough it is until you've really done it. But all around, um, grew up doing both playing position as well as pitching and, um, started not to like the hitting and pitching. So 
much. I didn't really like standing in there when it started getting past like 90 miles per hour. I was, I'm not standing in there anymore. <laughs> I'd rather be the guy throwing it at uh-huh. uh, guys. So that's kind of where I started to focus more on pitching and just grown since then. It's been a ton of fun. So, so how did you pick uh, baseball? Because I know you also played yeah. basketball. Was it like a family favorite, or is that just something you naturally excel yeah, at? That's a good question. Um, my parents told me ever since I was a little kid that I could throw a ball from my crib. I guess <laughs> um, I would always want to go out and play baseball, swing the bat. So I think from an early age, my parents and I kind of recognized that that was my favorite sport, and maybe that's what I excelled most at. Mm-hmm. But I did grow up playing basketball. I, in my opinion, I was I was pretty good. Um, wasn't great. I had fun. I didn't really put a ton of time into it. Um, so I played basketball too. Ended up, I just stopped playing basketball last year mm-hmm. um, because I ultimately, me and my family decided that um, probably best to put most of my time and effort into baseball. So I guess I, you could say that it was me and my family kind of recognizing from a younger age that that was probably going to be my sport. And mm-hmm. luckily it's worked out for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's awesome. So that killer mindset that you need to have on like the mound, let's say. So for everybody who doesn't get it, the baseball mindset is just totally different than any other sport because it's literally like a one-on-one with you and the pitcher. And there's so many different things that can happen. So I know you've read a couple different books or done a little more deep dives into uh, kind of what it takes to be that mentally sharp pitcher Mm -hmm. on the mound. Can you just kind of talk about I feel like I say that way too much. Just kind of talk about. <laughs> yeah, no. Man. No. Um, why don't you just uh, why don't you just talk about uh, the stuff that it takes to, or the mental aspect that you try to tie into your game yeah. also. Um, when I was probably thirteen, fourteen, I struggled more with the aspect of the mental game, mm-hmm. and that was something that I really um, wanted to work on and improve on. So when I was fifteen or sixteen, I would. Um, I had a couple books that just kind of focused on going into games, like how to prepare yourself, like where you should, what mental state you should be in when you're playing and kind of started figuring that out. And lately I've just kind of gone really simple and just said, go out there and have fun, compete with the guy and what happens happens. I mean, can't worry about who's watching you when there's tons of guys behind the plate staring at you with the radar guns. It can be a little much for some people and, it definitely was hard getting used to that, but mm-hmm. now, I mean, I go out and play, try to have fun, and just let the rest take care of itself. So Yeah, the recruiting part of baseball, which you just kind of touched on a little bit, is very crazy because you got, like, hundreds of coaches and scouts that'll come um, to, like, a baseball game, and they all have their own radar gun out. And it's I've seen it just a couple times towards the end of my GRB career um, where guys are getting, you know, 10 or 15 different coaches there to just try to see if they can make it to the next level. And that pressure, I feel, is, mm-hmm. is something that if you can withstand that pressure, I think that's something that's very, very important mm-hmm. when it comes to playing well, too, because you can't just um, look good in front of them. You actually have to play good, too. So I think that's a kind of a cool thing with baseball. That, that's Because if you're playing football, you don't really see them. No, yeah. and, and you don't see a scout in the stands. If you're playing basketball, you can't really see a scout in the stands. And I just like to use those, too, because – those are the ones that I play, but baseball you can you can see them because you're looking behind too, yep, and they're exactly. all they're all right there. Exactly, so yep. it's it's definitely. What, were you intimidated? Would you say by the first time that you knew when the scouts were there to watch? Yeah, you? I definitely won't lie. The first time I was like, when you see twenty guys standing right behind home plate, oh, yeah. pointing everything at you, it's it's a little just kind of shock. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then gradually you just get used to it, and I've started to not focus on them as much as what I'm doing, and yeah. just going out and doing what I can. When would you say the first time you really noticed like they were there? Um, I was 15 years old. Okay. We had a night game, and somebody told me that there was going to be a lot of people there. So I showed up, and you see all these college coaches walking around and kind of try to act like, yeah, yeah I don't really notice. But um, you definitely do, and um, I was focusing too much on who was watching me rather than what I was doing, and yeah. I ended up not doing so great. But I think it was good for me to kind of have that experience and oh, yeah. kind of just have a little failure and learn mm. how to deal with it. And uh, now I now I love when guys are watching. I just yeah. don't even notice them anymore. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man. Um, so a little bit more about kind of your just around town type deal. Um, oh, just pulled my mic out. Um, <laughs> so you played basketball for a little bit. Um, we played together. 
you had fun during basketball, right? Which years? Let's say that... <laughs> let's say sophomore year because we got to sit on the bench. Remember yeah, that? Those yeah. were some fun sophomore times. Sophomore year was very fun because um, we were both on JV, right? And we spent yep. a little time on varsity, and we probably played um, oh, like most of the minutes, or we probably had some of the highest minutes on the team. In for JV, time. Yeah, yeah, for JV. Sure. So we were out on the court together, and then um, we would spend a lot of time in the varsity games on the bench, mm-hmm. and we would have some some deep conversations, I could say, yeah, and some very just kind of random, like let's just yell stuff during yeah. the game and <laughs> yeah. see what people do. Yeah, it was awesome. So we would talk about anything from conspiracy theories <laughs> to mm. other type of deep government secrets that we thought were maybe true or, or Yeah, we not. probably should have been watching the game a little more. <laughs> yeah, but, we, um, we weren't real full. Fo- I mean, that's a sophomore thing when you know yeah. you're, you might get in with the last 30 seconds and try to get a rebound or something yeah. like that. And um, But, yeah, those were those were fun times when uh, I, I remember we would uh, try to think of a different topic when he was yeah. talking about just yelling. We would think of a different topic, like a different soup topic, and then we'd be out there yelling just random soup <laughs> names yeah. to try to give a little more energy to the bench. So I just thought that was funny and wanted to bring yeah, that I up. I remember too. one time we were – it was me, you, and Duncan McKinley were sitting on the bench, yeah. and we were talking about, like, the philosophy of life in general while a basketball <laughs> game is going on, like, 10 feet away. I mean, you got people screaming, crowd, everyone, and we're just sitting there talking about – yeah life well and then that carries on to the long bus rides too so that, mm-hmm. that was funny mm-hmm. but that's the year that raul started which is my my nickname and <laughs> that, that was that was that was a fun time but um i want to talk a little bit more about our grb days too man with uh coach yeah, Wambach. You talk about the hotel yeah we could how about we bring it back all the way to the eagles days and then we'll kind of work our way through it so um kind of when vince and i started playing together was after our little league days we had a fall ball team um, that we call ourselves the Eagles, and it was mixed kids from what's called the American League and the Lowest Creek League, and well, there was like one Elk Mound kid. Yeah. Um, so did your dad organize that, right? Yeah, my dad organized a bunch of guys from just around the area that were pretty good, and we went down every weekend to Austin for six weekends and played baseball. Yeah. I think the most fun part, though, is just hanging out with the guys rather than going down and playing every weekend. Yeah, we had some fun fall practices, and – and at Fairfax Park and there was one time um we were finishing up a drill and Grant was walking <laughs> in he was walking in towards me uh-huh. and I, I had the baseball in my hand and I was like hey Grant and he's like what I just t- I throw the ball pretty hard he just catches it barehanded <laughs> and looks at me I probably threw it like 65 70 miles per hour and he just caught it with his bare hand yeah looked at me and walked away I was that like, might have <laughs> been like the peak of my baseball career right <laughs> yeah it's like what just happened that's then? something that i brag about all the time yeah i caught vince barehanded once but yeah, it was true. like five years ago it was in the fall though so it was cold and i don't know if you if, if anybody's caught a baseball in the cold it doesn't feel the greatest but, <laughs> oh, no. with um, a glove on it doesn't feel the greatest yeah yeah he had no glove it's yeah. just bare hand yeah that's a sick story <laughs> thanks for bringing that up yeah. that, that made me feel good but yeah eagles were fun with everybody and and then um that's kind of when we got into T Cats, right? Because mm-hmm. didn't, yeah. weren't you throwing on the mound and uh, Coach Wambach came and said something? Yeah, to your one of the dad, coaches right? uh, came and noticed that we were yeah. playing and asked what I was doing the following summer, and that's where we kind of made the jump to travel ball. Yeah, some crazy stories with uh, the long car rides, man. So, where we practiced, oh, now I'm blanking on the name. Um, we practiced south of Madison, so it was a little little over two and a half hours or something in that range. Um, and we would drive down on, like, a weeknight and go and have, like, yeah. a practice at, like, 6 p.m. to, like, <laughs> yeah. 8 p.m. and then drive back. We get back at, like, midnight, and we're, like, 14 years old. Yeah. <laughs> but just that's going to school the next day. Grind of the T-Cats, yeah, man. It was. But um, we had some funny, funny car rides where, you know, as a 14-year-old, we were FaceTiming each other and laughing so hard at, like, the echo that would happen. And I remember we would um, type random things into our phone and have Siri read it out. Yeah, just, some, <laughs> just like, really weird stuff. Weird, weird we'd stuff. Each, yeah, we'd FaceTime each other from like five feet away and think it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, your mom um, probably thought we were crazy. Yeah, she did. And she still does. <laughs> yeah, but, she. Yeah, she probably still does. Um, yeah, but those are just some fun memories that we've made together. And um, one more thing that we would always do is at a hotel. Um, it started like it started just at like random yeah it was just so random how it started we went out we were this huge thing we stayed at a hotel and we were going out to eat and for whatever reason i just brought like a dress shirt Uh and some dress pants and it didn't match or anything 
So we went to like Chili's, which isn't like a super <laughs> nice restaurant. And I wore like a dress shirt and a tie and dress pants. My dad is looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> It and was then, like at exactly midnight is when we were leaving the hotel to go and eat. Yeah, and then we came back. We get back at like 1 a.m. And I just randomly started dancing around. I don't know why. Just dancing. And then Grant starts videoing it. Yeah. Puts it on the Snap story. And yeah. people were telling us to do more. So we would go out in the hallway like 12, 30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Just dancing and laughing. <laughs> it, it was the weirdest. Looking back, it was so, I don't know what we were doing. But it was, it was funny at the time. Yeah, it became a big hit. With everybody on my Snapchat story. I, yeah, apparently. Um, I don't know if you ever remember it. I think I remember scene. seeing yeah. it, yeah. You do, like, these weird hand jives, and, <laughs> and then I'm, like, trying to laugh quietly, so it's, like, this weird scratchy laugh in the background. But um, the first one was just, I think that's the best one. And then we tried to, we had, like, four or five really good ones after that. Um, and then we tried to just do too much with it. And yeah, then, I don't, I We think... tried to make this whole big, like, story out of it, and... and Tried to force it. And Weird stuff's gonna happen when you got two 14 year old kids <laughs> yeah. in a uh-huh. hotel on a weeknight yeah. at like 12:30 in the morning. Yeah, but those were some those were some funny times and um, yeah. And then so another thing, kind of going back to my Snapchat stories too. So that was like one of the big Snapchat <laughs> stories that everybody like recommended. But then um, New Year's, I was at Vincent's and oh, um, yep. that's when I started the Lacroix stories too. Oh yeah. So, so two yeah, we were big we were watching stories. the movie. We were watching the movie It. At like oh, yeah. one in the morning, Grant yeah. didn't want to watch it, so he leaves me. I'm watching it in the living room by myself. <laughs> yeah, and he just leaves and starts making these random videos about Lacroix. Well, and... I had been making them the whole night, but then yeah, yeah. then uh, I went and finished them off. I finished off the Lacroix, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just so sad. It's like a good New Year's, but it's a bad New Year's because I'm out of Lacroix. <laughs> and this and that, but yeah, that was a big, big part of like who I am today. This those La- all those Lacroix stories. I'm not gonna lie, but. Yeah. So Vince, let's get your thoughts on what's going on on the MLB right now because it's just a crazy storm, and I'm I'm kind of confused. So if you could kind of dull it down for me, and then let's debate this thing and see where we can go from there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not super well versed on what was going on. I just kind of see what's in the news, but it was basically an argument or kind of just back and forth between the um, players' association and the team owners, and they were kind of stuck on. Um, contract negotiations how much mm. money how many games should be played mm-hmm. what percent of the salary you guys were going to get and they finally reached an agreement i think a couple weeks ago and they're actually announcing uh, when the season's going to or the schedule tonight so they're going to play there's going to be some sort of season yeah. there's going to be 60 or so games i believe yep. and there's been a lot of guys saying that they won't play for mm-hmm. whatever different reasons which mm-hmm. is interesting to see guys kind of taking a year off so yeah i'm excited to see it should be starting up soon yeah 60 games so is it going to be more of a compact season than what it normally would be or since it's kind of like 60 games because they normally play 160 right yeah they play, but yep. they have the whole summer to, to do that but now they only have like mm-hmm. august right because they start yeah they'll play of... for like two months i think okay wow well, so, well, that's interesting yeah, it'll too. be cool because normally a lot of people don't watch baseball as much because there's 162 games yeah. you know yeah. i can watch one tomorrow but now, like, every game is going to be really important. Mm-hmm. It would be more uh, fast-paced, I guess, and, and it will just be really exciting to watch. So with the players and the ownership, what was the whole deal? So weren't the players the – the oh, so the – I don't even know, to well, be honest. I, I think the, the dilemma was when players sign up, it's usually for a multi-year contract. Yep. Um, so they're expecting a salary for that many amount of years. Um, and now yeah. the owners are saying you're not playing, yep. so we don't want to pay you mm-hmm. that previous contract exactly. because yeah. that wasn't really anticipated yeah. mm-hmm. uh, before. Which it's difficult to gauge like what side you can yeah, pick with exactly. that because it's a contract a player signed to get paid that amount, so they're mm-hmm. expecting that much. But yeah. it's also the owners are expecting the players to play. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's weird because they're only playing sixty games, so you mm-hmm. obviously can't pay them like their full salary. But that yeah, is I don't know what, what they the signed agreement. up for. Yeah. So I can see why it took them a very long time to figure that whole thing out. And a lot, at mo- most baseball contracts are fairly long too, or the big ones for the most part. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I can see how, you know, it'd be tough to figure that whole thing out. But I'm glad they figured it out. Um, who do you think some front runners are? You're a Phillies fan, right? I'm a Phillies fan. Yeah. So how are the Phillies looking this year? Um. They should be pretty good. I'm always pretty confident in them. I always say they're going to go to the World Series, and they never really do. But 
I mean, in a 60-game season, I think anything can happen. So yeah, that's it'll true. be fun to watch, and I think they've got a chance. But if I had to pick one team, I'm probably going to go with the Yankees. The Just Yankees. Garrett Cole, so fun to watch. Some Tons of good guys, too, yeah. Man. The old Yankees. <laughs> How are the Brewers looking? I don't even follow them, but the Brewers are my team. You know, um, I've heard looking. they're kind of a sleeper pick to be good this year. Ooh, that'll be fun. They just so, sneak I mean, up and snatch. I mean, Kristen <laughs> Yelich, man, he's so good. So good. I don't know if I – who do you think the MVP is, Yelich or Trout? Uh, I think I think you always got to go with Trout. Yeah. Um, he's not even sure if he's going to play yet. Um, oh, yeah, I, I did see yeah, that. But we'll see. That would be tough if he didn't. The best player in the yeah. league not playing would be I tough. mean, he's the LeBron James of baseball yep. pretty much, mm-hmm. so – do you, do you think he would inspire people to do the same thing? Yeah, that's what they're yeah. talking about. Yeah, like, that would if be... he leaves, then who else? Yeah. We'll see. Dang. It's tough mm-hmm. it, getting guys to play now, but we'll see. Who knows? He is wearing a mask, though, when he's playing, so that's good. Yeah, I saw that. Good role model. <laughs> um, he always used to do the milk commercials, too, so maybe he'll have to do a mask commercial to make sure everybody goes and wears their masks mm-hmm. and everything like that. So. Do you think if they actually open up the stands – would, well, would they open up the stands, or would they take different precautions? I've heard, like, players will have to, like, they won't be able to all be in the dugout. They'll have to be, like, partly oh. in the stand. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So, who oh knows? My. It's going to be – it'll be weird to watch, yeah, but it'll yeah. be interesting. Did you watch any of the Japan Baseball League when Or the was Korean on? Baseball. Or was it Korean? Yep. Uh, I actually didn't. I didn't watch a single game. Yeah. I know a lot of people were because that was mm-hmm. only baseball. Yeah, nothing else to do. I would have liked to see how they were running that. I know they didn't have fans there, so mm-hmm. – um, but that was kind of a little earlier than mm-hmm. when they figured it out here. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if – I would doubt if there's fans for at least, like, the first 30 games and then or maybe they'll just do a fans for playoffs mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. like that and just sell a majority of tickets because um, NASCAR just held a race where they were able to have 5,000 spectators. And how many are there usually? Usually there's, like, 100,000. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> basically nobody. Yeah. So it was at Talladega, which is, like, their biggest race. Yeah. And, um, so normally they have, with the infield, too, because you can drive your, like, motorhome in mm-hmm. the infield. They normally have about 100,000 people, but they only sold, like, 5,000 tickets. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, a lot of celebrities and stuff that were yeah. there. But Yeah, and I'm um, sure because they only had that many tickets, they jacked up the prices. Too. Yeah, yeah, and they were super expensive. But I, th- I think they're going to do 1,000 spectators per each race going out now, and then that will hopefully just keep increasing. But mm-hmm. um, it's kind of been cool to see NASCAR because they were the first one to really get back at it. And yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge NASCAR fan, too, so that was, that was fun to oh, see. Yeah. Um, it was weird seeing everybody masked up and having long mics for um, interviews and yeah. stuff like that. But that's what all all the sports, hopefully besides football, because you can't wear a mask mm-hmm. playing football. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's just going to be a new normal probably for all of us. So. Yeah. Um, I know you wanted. You just mentioned when we took the break <laughs> there that you wanted to get into some more of our stories that we yeah. got. So. There's just so lay many. it on them. What one do you want to talk about? Just You can Let's start look, with can one. Can we talk about all right, so just, yeah, I'm fine. I'll with just anything, toss a bunch so, out. Okay, um, here we go. We were, Story time. <laughs> this is gonna Vincent get good. Pani and Grant Gerber. Um, Let's go. We were in eighth grade. We were playing a basketball tournament. I'm not sure where, uh, down up I north or know. something like that. I don't know. And Grant had previously gotten like three or four fouls, and yeah. Grant's dad was our coach and wasn't too happy with him. Grant wasn't very happy. Everyone was kind of mad. We rough. weren't playing great. Um, <laughs> so it's towards the end of the game. There's a loose ball. One of the players goes and is running. Grant and him are both kind of closing in on each other, both going for the ball in the middle. And Grant just decides to <laughs> dive for the ball. And while he does that, he just grabs the kid's legs and tackles <laughs> him like a football, like in a football game. And it happened to be his fifth foul, so um, mm-hmm. he would have fouled out anyway. But I don't know if you got a technical or ejected or what happened. I just I just remember yeah. you kind of left and everyone was like, "What is yeah. going on?" <laughs> yeah, so, so you can I'll give my yeah. I'll give my little perspective <laughs> of that story. So yeah, it was it was the first game of the three day we play we were playing three that day. Mm-hmm. So it was the first of three, um, and yeah, my dad did did coach and he was a little hard on me at times. <laughs> I like to say, but it was all just tough love and uh, he was just trying to make me the best person that I could be, and I'm thankful for that. But um, we were yelling at each other, kind of, and I had gone and I got my third foul. I had to come out and sit because it's like a big deal in basketball if you get your third foul because mm-hmm. that's two more and you're out of the game. He's like, all right, you can go in, but if you get a foul, you're coming right back out. Um, 
went in and got a foul like right away. <laughs> it was I like to say it was like a ticky tack foul, which means like it shouldn't have been called. But um, it was called nonetheless, and I had to come back and sit back down and get yelled at a little bit more. Oh, yeah. um, but then the game started to get closer, and I was sitting there with four, still eligible to play. Um, went back in, and it was crunch time. Um, ended up being a loose ball, like Vince said. Uh, and then what happened was the kid was just in front of the ball, and I ended up taking the kid out. And, and, the, and then what happened from there was – you know, and I laugh about it now, but at the time yeah. it was it was pretty serious. Was like, he, like it was bad. It was like not good. So what? I just remember up, standing there like, what just happened? Yeah, <laughs> everybody, and all the parents were like, oh, that's, oh, that's not God. good. This kid just got tackled on the basket. He got hurt bad. I think someone said he broke his leg, but I, I never <laughs> oh know God. if that happened <laughs> or not. But um, ended up tackling the kid. Um, I just walked out of the gym. Um, it was just like a bad moment for me and. But it was just such a crazy, crazy moment. I think that was your last game of the day. I think you left after that. Yeah, I went home after that. And so we played the play. rest of the tournament <laughs> without <laughs> Grant. And then what ended up happening that tournament was like a couple people got hurt and our two little brothers ended up playing yeah. with you, right? Yep. So we two only <laughs> we only had like six guys and two of them were probably those were they were like sixth graders at the yep. time in an eighth grade tournament. Was it an eighth grade? Yeah, it wasn't because okay. it was our last year hoops club. I don't know if it was an eighth grade. I don't think it was. I, I think know. it was earlier. Doesn't matter. But anyways, ended up That's going ended up going home and um I think I just slept the rest of the day cuz I just didn't know what to think. It was such a <laughs> complex thing for my head. But yeah, that's definitely kind of the moment where I turned from a um football and basketball player to a football player and a football player playing basketball. Yeah. I got so, another story about that. All um, right, go ahead. <laughs> cuz I it. I actually didn't play basketball this year. This is my first year not playing basketball. Yeah. And I think it was your first home game. I was coming to watch, and I walk in. I don't know where this is going. You don't? No. Keep I walk going, in. Though. Keep going. And they're not playing the game. Somebody's hurt. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Got, oh, my gosh. I, I show Keep up going. and, like, why aren't they playing? Um, I just see, like, so there's nobody's playing. There's mm-hmm. guys off the court. And refs are just kind of standing there. And I'm like, what happened? And someone tells me that Grant – Happened to like do you knee your elbow with somebody right in the face? Yeah. Like the first play of the game, 15 seconds <laughs> in, I'm expecting to watch the game and I see, uh, but you guys standing there and yeah. the game stopped and somebody's really hurt. So I mean, yeah. that's probably my. Um, yeah, that's. So what ended up happening was you missed the tip off in the first 12 seconds of the game, <laughs> and um, I got the, we got the tip, we won the tip, and we were, we were running a a tip play that ended up going. A uh, little haywire, and I got a rebound, and I just put it back up, and I finished it. And then this kid like kind of grabbed his face like that that I finished over, <laughs> and everybody thought he broke his nose, and like his nose was broke, and there was blood on the court. Um, what ended up happening was I hit my elbow on, on like his top jaw, and his jaw like totally shifted, shifted oh. over, and he ended up going to like the ER, and um, it was just a bad, it was a bad deal, and it's just like I didn't try to do it, I just was going up, and he was a little smaller, and. Um, but yeah, that was the first. That was the first like JV basket of the year, um, and it came with like a broken jaw. So yeah, um, yeah I, I'm not. Pr- I'm not too proud of that moment, but it's just kind of like a cool story because it's like the kid like messed up his jaw. But I'm glad that that wouldn't happen. Yeah, to most me. kids are excited to come play basketball until they see. Yeah. Oh, we gotta play mm-hmm. great. <laughs> so, somebody's <laughs> somebody's gonna get hurt. Well, or it's something. tough too because I was always like I haven't grown since like sixth grade. I was yeah. like this height in like six, fifth or sixth grade. And for basketball, that's, like, really tall at that age. And for basketball, to be really tall is very important. Um, And then I just leveled right off, and I've been the same height. And it's just gotten harder and harder and harder for me to mm-hmm. compete in basketball. So I just got to be a little more physical with people at times. That's all, <laughs> that's all it is. a little too physical. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Not, like I said, I'm a football player playing basketball. Oh, yeah. So that's what you're getting out of those types of stories. But um, it was kind of different to see you in the stands this year. That, that was – yeah, it was weird. It was um, it was weird for me too. Like, yeah, it, I mean, I was just remembering. I'd see you guys on the bench, all the yeah. talks we had. Well, yeah, and I had to have those talks with different people this year, and it was weird trying to talk philosophy of life with yeah, somebody that is else. Then, luckily, I had Nolan Duncan again, which was like two guys that we would talk to regardless. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, those are some fun stories. Um, I'm trying to think of like one of the first baseball memories that we've had, like playing, like in a game. Against each other, like on the same team. Oh yeah, we did play against each other. What was the? F- oh, at uh, the Halley Heat Slam, 
I remember wasn't we, that we, that. we were playing in Altoona. And oh, yeah, pitching, that was Altoona. And I was up to bat. You're pitching. You hit the oh first guy in the gosh, back. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You hit the first guy in the oh back. Oh, my gosh, dude. Oh, my. Because weren't you pretty, like, We don't need to talk about this one. <laughs> All right, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Keep going. Because, I mean, you would probably say maybe you are even a little wild on the mound at the time. When well, you yeah. Younger. Yeah, I was. I, I Even now, I, I can't barely throw strikes. But, yeah, um, when it comes down to it, if I got to throw strikes, I really got to slow everything down, and then he can tell you the rest. Yeah, yeah. so I'm up to bat next. Grant hits the kid in front of me. I think it was Landon, Van Grunsman. Probably. Uh, hit him right in the back. Which I knew these guys because I was playing basketball with all yep. of them. So. And then I come up, and I'm thinking, I don't know where the ball is going to come. It's going to come <laughs> hit me in the face or something. Um, but I think I don't know what pitch it was, but I just remember it was hit a home probably run. a fastball that I just tried to <laughs> aim right down the middle. Yeah, I think I hit it. And a... he smacked it yeah. hard, like a hard home run. It was, what was it a grand slam? It was a grand slam. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. We lost. You pitched that game too, right? I did, yeah. I pitched yeah. It. You get a ground ball out off me. Yep. yep. I think I've only struck out. I don't know if I've struck out to you. You did last year in the scrimmage. No, I didn't strike out, yeah, though. I, I remember. <clears throat> High fastball. Oh, dude. <laughs> you almost one time. Tired. One time I struck out to you, just once. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many times I faced you, but. That was good at bat, though, I got to say. <laughs> That's what happens when you're playing against an elite pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was fun, though, that I got to finally – because we were always playing with each other, and mm-hmm. then I, I uh, got, like, two at-bats against you in Little League, and then I never got to face you again, and then we scrimmaged each other. The um, GRB B team versus the GRB A team, and yep. I was on the B team. He's on the A team, and um, he – did I pitch against you that game, too? Uh, not against me. I didn't hit. Because you didn't but, hit? Yeah. <sighs> dude, we could talk about some of the memories we had in Memorial Baseball. A lot of, when we played uh, Sun Prairie. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good story. Um, you can probably tell more of that than me. I'll, it's I'll just so it. stupid. Yeah, I don't know if you want to. It's like, just like little baseball banter, man. That just it it gets into people's head, but it's like <laughs> funny to do. And I don't know. I just love playing baseball too because it's such a social sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like really football just... and basketball really aren't that social compared to baseball, where you can just come into the dugout and kind of shoot the breeze and like, oh, I got to go at bat, but then you got to kind of like relock in. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the looseness of baseball and the people that play it and whatnot. But um, going back to GRB um, down in Sun Prairie, uh, we had two or three friends, and he had uh, he was playing with the older team at the time too, yeah. so he had two or three more friends. Um, that were on the Sun Prairie team, and they came up and scrimmaged us one weekend. Or it was yeah, a game. It was a game. It was a real game. They played us at Carson Park. Yeah, they got to stay the night at uh, Chaos over there. Uh-huh. At the, yeah, they're staying at a uh, whatever Aquatic or no Metropolitan yeah. or whatever <laughs> the heck City, it is, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, so um, we found out they were staying there the night before the game. Um, so we headed over there after practice, and we were talking to them and. Uh, just said hi to them and whatnot, and then the game day finally came, um, and I was playing in uh, right field. That was my main position last year. I would go like every other game in right field, um, and then I ended up getting pulled out, I think. So I was in the dugout, and we had one of our Sun Prairie friends, um, Liam Moreno, who's a very good hitter, uh, and he had gotten like a triple or a double or something, and he had slid on the ground. <laughs> Um, but he slid in like a dirt spot that made it look like he just crapped his pants. <laughs> so I was chirping him the whole time, like, hey, Liam, like, you, you crapped your that pants, buddy. Chip? Oh, this is, goes back to another story, too. I was like, Liam, your poop is showing. Um, that's another basketball story that we'll get into after this story. Um, but I'm like, Liam, bro, your poop's showing. And he's like, what, what? Like, at, he's at shortstop. Like, what? Who's? Because I don't think he knew that I was in the dugout saying that right away. And then he figured out that it was me, and then there was, like, this whole joke and, like, your chocolate ice cream dispensers running, man. And hey, go, yeah. go to the bathroom and we re- wipe, Liam. Come on, man. And just the little stuff like that. But uh-huh. um, those connections that we made through GRB finally kind of came full circle, and we got to play those guys. And um, what was the final score? Like seven to one. No, we got ten hundred. Oh, jeez. Yeah, That's I just not remember good. I've heard some very strange, random things come out of your mouth in sports games. Yeah. Well, that's because my mind's just nice and free, and then I just bloop, do whatever, <laughs> say whatever I want to say. But um, setting up that your poop is showing story, um, sophomore year, Vince and I finally get in to play yeah, in the Chippewa game. game, home game, big game, a um, lot of people there. 
what ended up happening was Vince and I were on opposite sides of the free throw line, and I was um, I was uh, on the over. side facing the student sections, mm -hmm. um, and he was on the other side. And what happens is, I'll stand up and show everybody. But what <laughs> happens is when when you're at the free throw line, um, it's a it's a common thing to go like this and stand like this. Um, with is your it? hands on your knees and just bent over in like a relaxed position like that. So I was doing that. Um, mind you, in front of the student section, and one of your buddies from Chippewa that you played baseball with, what, Dane? I think so. Dane, I, I don't know who. I don't I think remember. we I, I didn't hear. I didn't like hear one. any of this. This is all a, um, somebody. He goes, my number was like the like 44 or something crazy. Like he goes, 44, your poop's showing. <laughs> and I'm bent over like that. I'm like, oh, my God, no, what is happening <laughs> So I like looked at Vince and like, bro, these guys are like chirping me because we never get to go in during varsity games. So now mm -hmm. once we're getting actually chirped by these um, student section kids, I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, if I like a poop streak or something <laughs> on my basketball shorts, that's oh, awful. So um, I, I never, never ended up having anything like on my shorts, but it like made my <laughs> mind just run. Uh, so yeah, then, then I you missed the rebound that. after. I don't remember. I did remember. You, did you start checking or? I tried. I like. Well, I didn't want to do it in front of them either. Because yeah. as soon as you do it in front of them, they won. Yeah. But they already did win because they were in my head. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I think I might have tried to like ask somebody like, bro, do I have like poop on on like my butt right now or what? But yeah, it was just it was a bad deal. You could, and, why would you phrase it like that? You could say it like, dude, is there like any mark? Like, well, I mean, yeah, they said your poop is showing, so that, that's like what it came down to. So. But yeah, that's that. I ended up adopting that, and then it came into the spring, and then it was like this big thing, and and then uh, I said it during a volleyball game, which, you know, another <clears throat> kind of game where athletes are bent over. Um, hey, your poop <laughs> is showing. It just gets your mind running, and then these senior girls thought it was super funny in the front of the student section, and then it like kind of shot off, and it was like this thing that. Like we said it, and <laughs> I, I don't it. remember. <laughs> they, they, yeah, that happened. That's true. That this fall out of volleyball. I, feel, game. I don't think I've ever said it before. Before that, like ever. I, I think I don't think I've ever. Like at a game? Just in general, I don't think I've ever <laughs> said that. Yes, you have. I don't remember. Okay, but it was like this big thing that ended up happening. Like, hey, your poop is showing. Maybe it was with the Abling boys that that was bigger with, but um, yeah. That ended up kind of taking off, which I did not think it would, because it's like this is a little stupid thing, uh, like poop. Remember, remember that too. That's another story. Coming back to what? poop. Oh, another poop. Story. Yeah, yeah, another poop story. Sorry, we're talking about poop today on the seven one five, but you just let the conversation flow, and that's what it comes down to. Yeah, people. I guess the title is it, it won't. It'll go from like baseball with Vincent Trapani to talking poop with baseball and talk, poop with yeah. Vincent Trapani. Ah, oh, good laughs. So anyways, we were going through. Uh, what? We were going through like McDonald's at like twelve thirty in the morning, and like you just go poop, or your dad says it. Your dad's just like, "Hey Vince, try to say poop with a straight face." Remember <laughs> this now? You don't. Oh, yeah, I do. Dude. I do. Oh, you do. And then for like the next like three weeks, we were just trying to practice trying to say poop without like smiling, <laughs> but it was like just the That's funniest so thing. Oh gosh, yeah. We were happy to have you on today, Vince. Yeah, thanks for having me. I love what you guys do. I love what you do too, man. Keep it up with baseball, and hopefully we'll get you back on sometime. But thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys.